Welcome back to another Dragonflight Alpha video. Today I'm going to show you what is a very, very early look at the new user interface of World of Warcraft. Now I do have to really say very early. In quite a few ways this actually does look quite rough. That being said, there are a few really nice pieces of functionality. And you know what, I'm not going to bury the lead. Would you like to know how much more bag space you're going to have in this expansion? Because it's actually a lot. So. Here, here I am. I can open up, I can expand. This is the new bag icon, right? I can expand that out, and now I can see my usual bag slots. There is, in fact, a new bag slot in Dragonflight. Now, something that a lot of people don't know is how this bag slot works. This bag slot is actually for a thing called a reagent bag. This is a new type of bag. It's not like the engineering or the tailoring or, you know, whatever, like, specific profession bags that existed in the past. They are basically a bit like the reagent bank, right? So that's how Ian described them in an interview. They're not currently implemented, but the UI container for them is implemented. Now, what that means basically is that these reagent banks will take all of your crafting mats, and I presume they will take them up to an extremely high level per stack, just like how the in-game reagent bank works. I think that is just very nice for people's bag space. Additionally, it's also been found that 36 slot bags will be the maximum size in the Dragonflight expansion. So not only do you have 36 slots for your existing bags, but you also get a new container that's basically going to take all of your crafting mats. I think that's pretty sweet. As I go to the rest of the UI then, you can clearly see that some things are just unfinished. Here's a great example. This is like my character, uh, you know, my little character portrait. This is old. This is not actually looking like the one that they are going to be implementing. Here's a screenshot of that from Blizzard's preview in the past. So we do actually know that a lot of this is going to look better. This is just very early on. Now, one thing that is here is the new world map. It looks really, it's, it's nice, it's big, it's just really clean. Now, there are some weird things like the text here, like the alignment feels weird of all of those elements, but I wouldn't worry too much about that. They, I think, are eventually going to be customizable and... Uh, it's clearly very work in progress. Also for your buffs, you have a little uh, toggle. So if I add a new buff, you can see you can toggle displaying your buffs or not, which I think some people will like. Then if I go down to the bottom right, you can see that we can collapse the number of bags. And also we have a new, I suppose, more minimal looking micro menu for all of those options. So certainly it does blend a bit more seamlessly into the game world as compared to the current default one that exists in the Shadowlands expansion. The next thing to show you then is our action bars, and this is where we have the most change, but also it's very work in progress. So you can see the options that would normally reside here just are not there yet. But I can show you that Blizzard have basically implemented the add-on Bartender within World of Warcraft. So I can move these action bars about. When I click on an action bar, I can change the number of rows. I can then make it be horizontal, or I can make it be vertical. I'll set it back to horizontal, and I'll put the rows back like that. You can change the number of icons. You can change the size of those icons. So I suppose if you wanted to just track a few cooldowns, but you didn't want to get weak ores or something, you could probably just use this bit of UI. There's also icon padding that you can set if you want those to be a little bit more spaced out. You can then change its visibility settings. Then there's also, of course, a quick link to the action bar settings where you can enable the additional action bars, um, always show them, that kind of thing. Then also, quick keybind mode, which I think that was added in Shadowlands, but it's all just quite, you know, nicely there. It's nice and convenient within the menu. Now, if I go to the main action bar, you can see that I can hide the, um, I can hide the art bar. I can also hide the scrolling. So if you want things to look a bit more minimal, you can do that. Another nice feature too is that there are layouts. So right now the layouts don't work because modern and classic are actually just the exact same. But you will be able to add new layouts, you'll be able to import other people's layouts, and you'll be able to share layouts. That is a really, really nice feature. And of course, eventually, the micro menu, you'll be able to move that. The bag, you'll be able to move that. Minimap, you can move that. We've seen Blizzard show screenshots where all those things are actually movable. So this is something that you can make look a hell of a lot better than it currently does on the alpha build. So clearly it's very whip, and how about I do a little bit of self-promo and also show you a bit of a whip thing as well. So The Pale Beyond is the video game that we are making. Here is a mega early version of that game's UI. Looks pretty rough. Here's a slightly more modern one, and here is like the most modern up to date. So that's just an example of how like UIs, they do develop as a, as a game goes, because you've got to make all the functionality in the back end. 
and then you can kind of do the front end work. It's very easy to do a lot of the mockups up front. And the reason why the things that Blizzard actually showed us in the little preview event, and the reason I think why maybe those are not seen in here is that those were perhaps the mockups. I mean, some of those things to me, they look like images and Chrome tabs in people's computers. So I think that's perhaps mockups they had, and they're actually now in the process of implementing all of that stuff. Of course, if you want to check out more about The Pale Beyond, it's a narrative, uh, it's a narrative role-playing game, Antarctic uh, survival kind of theme. If you've enjoyed shows like, say, The Terror, we actually started development before The Terror, but it was quite funny because we almost ended up working uh, with The Terror. We were almost doing a license thing for that, but uh, we ended up deciding not to go that direction. Funny story, but for now, if you want to check out our game, you can wishlist it on Steam. Okay, to go back to this, the menu here is honestly... <sighs> There's a major good feature here, okay? A major good feature, but man, does this look horrible right now, and it's super unusable. So these menus used to be a lot more compact, and that meant that at a glance you could see everything you wanted to see. Now they have these big, long scroll bars. And I think the thing that worries me about this, and this is the feedback I give Blizzard, is these are all very spaced out. And there's even things like just some of the some of the text spacing feels weird to me. I find it quite hard to scan it with my eye. And because it's all so big, it means I have to very slowly scroll through it all. And that means that I find it harder to at a glance look at what my settings are. I find it sort of harder to scroll through them all. That being said, there is a great new feature, and that is the search bar. So let's just say I've rolled a new character and I want to turn auto loot on. I can just type in auto loot and uh, there you go. It's done a search function on everything here. It's like, there's auto. Because I put in auto, I can see auto run. So I suppose it's also like a bit of a fuzzy search. So that's kind of neat. That just means that even if this UI is an absolute, just total ball ache to use, if you know the thing that you want, you can just type it in. As an example, I want to show you a new thing. So right now in World of Warcraft, this is what your bags look like. Bam. Right, you see all of your bags separately. Well, this is a new feature that they've added in called Combined Bags. This is something you will, of course, have seen in many different add-ons. You've got Addy Bags, you've got Bag On, etc. But it's nice to just have it be here in the default game UI, where you can just have one big combined backpack. And certainly, once I add in a 36-slot reagent bag that can be crafted by a tailor, you can see just how humongous that thing is going to be. Another decently nice thing is the cursor sizes. I believe that these have actually been updated to be higher quality. And certainly when you're in a busy raiding environment, you need to know where your mouse is. It can be a real pain in the ass. Many of us, myself included, actually use a weak aura to help us always know where our mouse cursor is. But if you just want to have a, a larger mouse in game, then this is a great option. And thankfully, it is a decently like high resolution. So that's a pretty nice feature. Another accessibility feature they've added in is for the new empowered spells. And this is an accessibility feature, but for some players, it may also be preferable. So here's how an empowered spell works by default, right? I hold it in, and whenever I release, it fires. Well, there is actually uh, there's actually a new, uh, new way of doing that. I suppose it's not new because it's a new ability, and that is press and tap. This mode essentially means that the first time you tap it, it'll start charging. The second time you tap it, it will actually cast. So for some players, that'll be more comfortable. I'll this is this is what it looks like here. So let me just find... Uh, I want to find just a, a one-off mob. So bad news for you, Armageddon. Your, your day has came, right? So I'm going to click the fire breath. And you see it auto-charges. I'm not hitting a button. And then when I hit the button, it fires. I'll do it again for Essence Surge. I hit the button. I only want to cast it too. I tap it again for my second cast. So that, I think, is a pretty nice accessibility feature for some players who just don't want to be holding that down. Then another nice feature is the new cast bar. So basically, it looks so much nicer, and there's a nice little bit of UX. If your cast fails, it does a little rumble, and it turns red. So that's actually just quite good for the user feedback. You really know what's going on. Looking through the graphics menu then, we don't really see new things, but we do see that it's been kind of refactored with this new style. And honestly, it does look really visually rough. That would be my feedback. Here's a great example. It would be pretty easy to see this and think that RAID graphics quality was a setting under the Advanced tab. But no, the Advanced tab actually has a click button here that expands it out. Um, now also, there is the view density and the view distance. Those are said to be uh, said to be longer, certainly set to 10. I mean, I never noticed. I'd also be happy with them at 8. 
Um, so anyway, that's good enough. Maybe the higher view distance isn't in, it's kind of hard to say. Uh, but anyway, there's not really much in the way of like new abilities here. Perhaps, uh, I don't know if the super resolution, um, the AMD uh, resampling solution is, is a new thing there, but basically these are all what you would expect, just that they are more spread out with all of these toggles in a way that is way harder to navigate. And that is quite frustrating, but at the very least they have out of the source functionality. Now, another nice thing then is uh, click casting. So this is pretty cool. Um, a lot of people will have used add-ons to do this in the past. Now, this is not a new thing for this expansion, but it is something that was added, I believe, either on patch 9.2 or 9.2.5. Pretty simple. It's just like having a, well, you know, the, the mouse over casting. So as an example, if I use uh, my left mouse click, I will cast living frame on that unit. So if I was to mouse over a unit frame and then left click that, I would actually cast living flame on that target. And if that is a friendly party member, that will actually do my heal. So again, add-ons have typically dealt with this, but, uh, oh yeah, and then mouse over casting too. Um, this is the sort of thing that was done by add-ons, but that it's available in game is really nice. There's a lot of people who are using add-ons like implied target that had been just not supported for a long time. Now those things are in game. Going through the rest of the UI panels then, everything is the same apart of course from professions because professions are being updated in a very major way in this expansion. So here's a quick look at the new profession UI. Now I've got to say there's one thing here that's mega work in progress and that is this. So this is basically like your character pane as a blacksmith. My current belief is that this left hand side is going to feature a bunch of essentially talents and specializations, which is pretty cool a lot more progress and depth within the crafting system. The right hand side then will be showing your blacksmithing gear and you can actually make that appear in your character while you're crafting. Right now though, there's only room for a tool and then two accessories. I have to imagine there will be more and this stuff will all provide you with crafting stats, which uh, of course will impact the quality of your crafts. Then when we look over here, we can see, uh, right, we've got our reagents, we have our optional reagents we can add in, and then we have our finishing reagents, which can do things like change our crafting statistics or resourcefulness or skill to end up getting a better craft. You can see the quality level system being reflected in the UI too. So this all I think looks great. The only problem is whenever I say go to Shadowlands blacksmithing, um, sometimes like it looks a little bit weird if I go way back to Northrend, it just feels way too big, but again, it, it is kind of understandable. Um, you know, they're trying to sort of shove the old system into a UI that's got to work for this whole new system. So that basically is a look at the new user interface options in the Dragonflight Alpha. This is very early. So when they add in these new unit frames, the new raid frames, more uh, customization options and moving options for these various different elements, like being able to move your experience bar as an example, then we can actually start to get UIs created with this system that look significantly better uh, and a lot more cleaner than what we've seen in the game right now. But absolutely, this is mega whip and seriously Blizzard, I would implore you, keep the search function, that's awesome, but please take a different look at this. I really do just find it, I find it very hard to parse this personally. Um, I don't really know anyone who's like kind of looked at this and thought it's better other than that there is this search function. So search is awesome, but I think this needs to be a bit more compact so you basically can see it all at a glance a bit easier. Okay, so that's this change in Dragonflight. Hope you found this to be interesting. I suppose let me know what is your feedback, what sort of features do you want to see Blizzard add? And of course, if you want to support us in our game development endeavors, you can check out and wishlist the Pale Beyond over in Steam. And uh, the wishlist really do help because, hey, it's a world of algorithms, and algorithms, they love numbers. They're very hungry. Okay, there will be more content on this channel over the coming days, plenty of live streams and all of that, so uh, stay tuned. See you next time. Thank you.